Hello, it's James from X-Robots. This is part one of how I built my BB-9e droid from the new Star Wars movie, which you saw in last week's video with Colin Furze and his life-size TIE Fighter. This video is sponsored by eBay, and all the items used to build this droid were bought only from eBay. Part two comes out later in the week, and you should check out Colin's channel to see how he built his TIE Fighter. So here's the CAD I've planned for the ball. All of these parts are going to be 3D printed, so we're going to start with the triangles, which are cut into three. Uh, now, instead of just printing them all out and uh, sticking them together edge to edge, there's going to be some tabs inside. So I've got this red tab here that joins the centre of all of those. And the panels are 6mm thick, but the recess is 3mm. And then where it joins the corners and it joins the circles, we're going to have another round tab, which is what that thing is floating off there. So that'll fit in. They'll be glued together and hopefully that should make it nice and strong. These parts are printed with the Moore Struder with his 1.2mm nozzle, but I'm only using a 0.5mm layer height. So that should make the layer bonding really good, and the parts should be really robust. They take about two hours to print each. So to get the perfect round ball here to be the right radius, I've built this jig, which is a 3D print and it was made in CAD by subtracting a 500 mil ball. So the assemble piece with all three fits in there rather perfectly. I can use that to align the 3D prints to stick them all together. And of course this biscuit piece goes in the middle and that helps bond it together. But these aren't a very good fit at the moment because of all the 3D printing artifacts. So first of all, we need to clean those up before we stick them together. All right, so two pieces are stuck together in my jig with the biscuit in the middle, and I can now put the third one in, and they should all align perfectly. So those two, of course, attach together, and again, I can use the jig to make sure that it's nice and round and the right radius. So there will be two tabs, of course, which go there. At the moment, these are just glued together edge to edge, but I'm not gonna install them just yet because some of these are gonna be very special depending on where the axle of the droid runs. So at this point I want to check my hole is round, so I've made um, these test prints which are basically the circular panel. And you'll notice I've left the middle in here but it's recessed by about 4mm. And that means I can just stick an insert in there and I don't have to worry about printing this overhang or printing them at a weird angle or anything like that which I've seen done before. Well that appears to be a perfect push fit into the hole and bear in mind the hole is basically vertical so it will fall out if I push it. But of course we've got those tabs on the inside to hold those in. Well, it's a bit later and my whole ball is assembled and of course I've put everything together in my jig there so we've got a perfect ball hopefully. Um, I can't test rolling it because it won't go in any direction without there being a flat there at the moment, but it looks pretty good. So of course there are several seam lines between the pieces. There's one here and that's actually a seam line in the cosmetics of the droid when it's done and that's where the pieces were flat on the bed so they've come together very well. These, however, were the top of the parts and you can see there's a slight gap there. So instead of just filling those with filler, I'm actually gonna weld them together and I'm gonna do that with friction by putting some filament in my Dremel and then going over and actually filling that seam in which will fill it and make it stronger. So just apply a little bit of pressure and it will melt the filaments and then we can just go over forcing that into the hole and it's actually melting the plastic together and filling the hole with more molten plastic as we go. So that's all filled in now. I'm going to take this rather coarse file to it just to get off the worst of it. Then I can continue to sand it. So I've patched up all of those. Feels pretty tough now, those have all been uh, friction welded together, so hopefully that's going to be strong enough. So I'm just going over the ball now, and this is black acrylic paint mixed with wood filler. And hopefully that'll fill in any build lines and minor defects. 
we'll sand that all off and then after that we'll go over it with some bumper repair paste if there's any big holes. So just working that into any defects I can see and just scraping it over the build lines in the 3D prints or what's left of them. And obviously this will be painted again afterwards, but it means that if we scratch the surface, we scratch back to black and we don't scratch back to bright pink or anything weird. Well, we need to continue to work on some of these defects. Apparent under the bright light there, there's a little hole there, but most of it's looking all right. But now I want to look at the panels and check those fit okay. So there's a couple of those panels again and obviously I've glued the two halves together. They'll need some clean up, you can see a few minor defects, this one I've had a bit of a go at. And we need to make four of those which are the main spots that go around the ball where the droid will drive. I've also made the inserts which fit just in there so they will need gluing in and they will need the gap filling also and that will need cleaning up too. It's some considerable time later and I've used various fillers and a lot of sanding to try and make those uniform and they're not looking too bad. Obviously I've used different filler to the colour of the base colour but I can see the regions here for when we come to paint them and that's the main thing I wanted. The ball itself has had a considerable amount more work done to it as well. It's only hand painted for now, there's a few blemishes still uh, but on the whole I'm pretty happy with it so let's get those spots fitted. I'm just going around pushing the panels in because they're quite a tight push fit then gluing them in, just spot tacking them all the way round then we'll go and put the tabs on the inside and then we should get a nice uniform ball and we don't want too many lumps and bumps because obviously the head has to drive over it and it has to roll on the floor. All those panels are fitted so hopefully you can now see there's a recess here and this one has a disc installed and I've got another one to fit in there. So those will get glued in, four on each panel and that should help bridge the gap, bridge all the seams and make that nice and strong. So that's all my panels stuck in and all the tabs stuck in, it's looking quite a lot like a droid. Feels extremely substantial, I was going to friction weld on the inside those panels but I don't think I'm going to bother, it should probably be alright glued like that. And I think now we can move on and look at the internal drive mechanism. So here's the rough CAD for my drive mechanism. We're going to have a wheel that drives around the outside of the ball again. And that's similar to the way I did my previous BB-8. But this time we're going to support everything on this axle. And that's so basically it doesn't fall out of its runners. Last time we had a hubless wheel but we had some issues with it driving out of the runners. And that causing the head stick to jam and the head to fall off. So this time we're going to use an axle. Although the actual drive is going around the outside of the ball. So we're using the ball as some of that gear reduction as well. And we'll have a look at that motor assembly in a minute. We've got an axis on the other axis that goes sideways and that causes the batteries to move and some other ballast and that will cause the robot to lean and it will cause it to steer. So this is my main drive motor, this is a Bainbox P80 gearbox and um, the matching motor here which is pretty huge actually, it's about the size of a tin of beans so that should have more than enough torque to drive that robot along, bearing in mind there's something like a 5 to 1 reduction as this is driving around the outside of the ball. So um, in fact it's pretty huge and the only way we can do this is by putting the wheel around it. So uh, we've got these bearings here which fit over. So uh, the motor will drive along like this but we need to turn something around the outside so we've got a flange that fits on there and we've also got this. Now this is the wheel itself, it's got a 3D printed Ninja Flex tyre which is pretty soft and it should climb over any of those defects on the inside of the ball and we've got this cup piece uh, which allows this to be turned and this fits onto the flange. So that fits like so and then we're going to clamp the motor here and this whole thing will drive along. So that of course will fit in the bottom of the ball there 
and it will be constrained by the axle and the rest of the mechanical assembly. The first thing we need to do is build the axle mount. Most of the rest of the assembly is 2020 extrusion and 3D printed parts, so it should be relatively easy to build up. The only issue I've got is that my uh, batteries here and this side to side pendulum actually come pretty close to the opening in the ball here, so suspending this axle is going to be quite an interesting challenge. So I've designed this part here and it's got two tabs which are very similar to the tabs that hold the rest of the ball together and it screws in between them and this is obviously needs to be removable to get parts in and out and service the droid and you'll see here that in fact if we look at it from exactly one side this is fitted exactly in that hole but it doesn't go inside the hole so the internal mechanism won't hit it as the ball rotates. It may be that I turn this into a complete cross and go sideways as well, but for now that's all we need. And this will have a bearing mounted in it, which is big enough to go on the outside of that square axle so we can build a shim so that fits perfectly in there. So I've printed those and attached them. We will have countersunk screws when I eventually get some, but basically that means this part is removable and that means we can build the droid and service it because obviously the motor won't fit in this gap anymore. So we've got in the back one there, you can just about see there's a bearing fitted in there and obviously there's one in here and that means my 2020 extrusion can run through there and obviously there'll be a shim that means it fits perfectly in those bearings. So unconventionally, we've got a square drive shaft. But of course, the drive shaft isn't powered at this point. It's still powered by the motor going around the outside. The axle is just for alignment. So these seem actually pretty tough, so I think that's going to be fine. So now we can print the other main parts, which are mainly the hangers that swing the pendulum and the battery, and these other blocks that attach all the 2020 together, and then we can start getting the internals assembled. With this part in the end, I decided just to snap the bottom off and put the batteries closer together so there's more clearance from the ball. They were going to be zip tied on anyway, uh, but this piece doesn't really serve any purpose. So I think that's going to be more than strong enough and of course this swings to move mass sideways. Here are the other parts and what I've done is made the hole bigger for the bearing and then made a more accurate part with a normal extruder. So we've got a bearing actually fitted in there and the square bushing in the middle that rotates so we can use that square 2020 as an axle. So obviously all these individual parts have been designed so they actually fit through the hole and I can build it. I'm going to build as much of the drive unit as I can outside and then see what doesn't fit through the hole, take those bits off, put what does fit in and then put it all together again. Obviously this piece comes off as well from both sides so we can get some quite large parts through. This whole thing fits together with the 2020 in these holes and you can just about see some T-nuts which fit in the groove of the aluminium and then those are bolted in from the outside and that holds it all rigid. We're getting there, so we've got our two main parallel links there. This whole thing is very rigid because of the aluminium and the tight fitting holes and all of these bolts holding it together. This is the main motor mount that's gonna hold that um, hub drive mechanism. This part is actually ABS and it was printed in a cardboard box, kept at a certain temperature by covering it and uncovering it. And I did that so the ABS didn't warp and we get a nice accurate strong plate with no splitting or warping. Now I've added this motor here and this controls the pendulum leaning side to side. So that controls this axis. And of course, this is one of the battery hangers we looked at before and the main drive motor goes in here. So now we've got pretty much everything to mount this on its axis and we can put this in the ball and see if it drives along. All right, so everything's fitted in the ball there. We've got our main drive motor, of course, running on the bottom and we've got our side to side pendulum motor that moves these batteries. We may need to add some more mass because I'm not sure if there's quite enough there to actually offset the mass of the main motor. So I'm just going to put some power on that pendulum and check it moves side to side. Yes, it does very much. That motor should be more than strong enough. So there is my main drive wheel, which of course will drive the internals around as it turns. And we can give that a little test. Well, it's gonna be fast. So what you might have noticed in the middle is another thing that swivels around that axle and that's to control the head. And that's where the head control stick is gonna be fixed. So everything rotates around the center of the ball. And that looks like this, which is a stick that rotates around that hub and it also moves in the other axis as well. So we can get all of those degrees of freedom. In the middle of that is a servo that deals with the head rotation. And we've got various platforms here holding the servo and also holding a bearing with another one of those bushings. And in the middle is some 2020 extrusion, which means we can move the magnet holder up and down really easily. And here are some of those parts. So I've hacked the servo for continuous 360 rotation by taking the end stops out and fixing the pot in a fixed position. 
On the other side here, we've got a bearing in the bushing there, and this should slot straight into the top of the servo, and this should all fit together. There we go. So obviously we'll cut off the 2020, the magnets go in here, so this thing can rotate round and round and round. And here it is all assembled. So those are my magnets, which are extremely strong N52 magnets, and those go round and round and round and round. I can adjust the height and the distance from the ball with the screws in here and here. So that is the end of part one, but if you want to see it working and finished, check out last week's video with Colin Furs and his giant TIE Fighter. Thanks again to eBay for making this video happen, and look out for part two later this week.